All right, so we've got uh, some famous experiments that we're going to be taking a look at uh, over the next week, week and a half or so. Uh, and all of these are very famous uh, in psychological history. Uh, we're going to look at what the experiments tell us, but also at how they were set up. Uh, so really going to take kind of a two-pronged approach uh, to looking at... Um, at these things. So uh, the first ones uh, we're going to take a look at um, are the Solomon Ash Conformity Experiment uh, and Milgram's Obedience Experiment. Uh, and so uh, as we take a look at these, uh, what we're going to do uh, is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about them, uh, but then I'm going to send you to our YouTube playlist uh, because uh, there are going to be some videos on there of the actual experiments uh, that I really think uh, you're going to have a good time uh, taking a look at. Uh, so the first one is the Solomon Ash conformity experiment. Now if you take a look at the picture on the screen, uh, that's actually going to show up on the exam for this time. Um, this picture uh, is really what this experiment uh, is all about. Uh, conformity means that you are following the crowd. You're doing what other people are doing. Uh, and so with the Solomon Ash conformity experiment, what he wanted to do is put people uh, in a position uh, and see if they would do something because other people uh, were doing something. Now, the setup of this experiment, um, there are going to be five or six people in the experimental room, but only one of them uh, is really a subject of the experiment. The other four or five of them are in uh, on the experiment. They're going to look at cards that look like this. Uh, they're going to be asked which line on the right part of that card matches up with the line that's on the left. Um, the people who are in on the experiment uh, are being going to be told to pick the wrong line. Uh, and so the idea is they want to see how many people uh, will conform uh, at least once uh, to picking the wrong answer because everybody else is. Uh, this is Solomon Ash. This is a pretty beast picture uh, of Solomon Ash. Uh, and his hypothesis was that most people wouldn't conform. So he believed that we were able to stand up against that peer pressure. And that wasn't going to be something that affected uh, the individuals. Um, the method, uh, like I said, what they're going to do uh, is set up this person uh, and they move the person around uh, in different orders. Uh, you know, were they the first one to go and then heard these wrong answers behind them? Were they the third one and there are people coming behind them that are going to uh, have a chance to give other answers? Uh, what he found, right, was that a third of people uh, conformed a majority of the time. So if your mama ever asked you, would you jump off, if everybody else was jumping off a bridge, would you do it? Uh, a third of us, psychologically speaking, uh, are taking the plunge. Not real sure what that says for those folks, um, but a, a third of people are uh, conform a majority of the time. 75% of people, so three out of four people, uh, conformed at least once. Uh, and when they ask them after the experiment, because you can perform these experiments, you just have to tell people uh, that you lied to them uh, or you deceived them in the beginning. Uh, they ask them and they said they, they were doing it because they didn't want to be um, different than the group. The next experiment we've got is Milgram's Obedience Experiment. Here's another picture that you're going to see again. Uh, this is another experiment that involved deception. Uh, you see three people. You see the experimenter, the student, and the teacher. Uh, the subject of this experiment is going to be the teacher. Um, the teacher is the only person who's not in on the experiment. The student is actually an actor. Uh, who's in on the experiment, uh, and the experimenter uh, is there to continually encourage uh, the teacher uh, to keep performing uh, what it is that he's supposed to be doing. Now, so this is the setup. Uh, the student is in a different room than the teacher and the experimenter. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to put a video on the playlist that really does a nice job uh, of showing uh, how this whole thing was set up. Uh, basically, this is based on um, the aftermath of World War II, there were these things called the Nuremberg Trials. Uh, in the Nuremberg Trials, they rounded up these former Nazis that were involved in the Holocaust, uh, and they, they put them on trial. 
Uh, and when they put these guys on trial, um, basically their defense was, we were good soldiers, we were following orders, this was Adolf Hitler's fault, uh, this was Himmler's fault, uh, these, these higher-ups in the Nazi organization. Uh, and the, the jury at the Nuremberg trials didn't buy it. Uh, they basically said, look, there are some orders that you just don't follow. Well, they had a chance to do this all over again in 1962. Um, this man you see on the screen here is a fellow named Adolf Eichmann. Uh, and Adolf Eichmann was the logistics man uh, for the Holocaust. He was telling all these um, trains where to go, what camps uh, to take the, the Jewish folks to, that sort of thing. Um, and so he escapes uh, after World War II. They don't catch him. They don't find him until 1962. Um, they find him. He'd, he'd gone to Argentina. It's a really cool story. I'll, I'll link something uh, else on the playlist that's, that's got a little bit of his story too. But it's neat. Basically, he's captured uh, by the Israeli secret police, this Mossad, and taken back to Israel uh, and put on trial. It's a crazy story. Um, they actually made a movie a couple of uh, years ago uh, that's in the film library, by the way, um, that uh, deals with his capture. Uh, but they bring him back to Israel. He says the same thing in his trial defense. He says, look, Hitler made me do it. Um, a good soldier follows orders. And again, they don't, uh, they don't buy it. He becomes the first person executed by the modern state of Israel. But there's a psychologist named Stanley Milgram who's going to say, I wonder if that's real or not. I wonder if we would hurt somebody if someone in authority was telling us to. So that's what the whole Milgram experiment uh, is about. Um, the um, idea here, the hypothesis, was that most people wouldn't follow the morally questionable uh, order that was being given to them. Um, the machine that you see here in front uh, was an electric shock machine. Uh, this is where the teacher is going to be sitting. He or she is going to think that she's he or she is giving shocks to uh, the student who's in the other room. Remember, the student's in on it. They're just pretending they're being shocked, um, but our subject doesn't know that. The independent variable here is going to be the presence of this authority figure in the room, this experimenter that is keeping, encouraging the teacher uh, to keep moving up this machine. You see all those little knobs there, and you'll see this in a, in a couple of videos. Those are going up 15 volts uh, at a time, so it goes from like 15 at the end to 450 uh, at the end um, at, when you get to the end of the machine. And so they wanted to see when would people stop. Because as they go up this machine, basically what's going to happen is um, the student is going to start to say, wait a minute, I'm, I'm being hurt. I want to finish this experiment. Um, and there's going to be a time where the teacher is going to look and say, should I keep going? Uh, and so the experimenter uh, is going to say one of four things. Please continue. The experiment requires that you continue. It is absolutely essential that you continue or you have no other choice. You must go on. Uh, and those encouragements um, are meant to um, set up this circumstance of, um, you know, this person is telling me I have to keep doing this, so would people do it or would they not? They'd put an um, advertisement in a newspaper, uh, and so the first time they do this, they do it with men, but they repeat this experiment uh, a couple of different times, uh, bring different people in. Uh, it didn't really matter, white collar, blue collar, men, women, uh, the results of this uh, were pretty consistent uh, across the board. The results of this experiment, 65% of teachers, so seven, almost 7 out of 10 people, uh, go up to the maximum voltage. Uh, this even after the, um, the subject stops responding. Uh, they, they set this up for some of them to make it seem like they had a heart condition. Uh, the person saying, my heart's hurting, then quits responding. 65% of teachers still go to the maximum voltage. Everybody did attempt to stop, but the problem with this one was people at the end of it kind of had an idea of um, maybe a better idea of who they actually were than what they were comfortable with. Uh, and so you know, they were, it turned out, the type of person who might uh, hurt 
uh, another person. And so this one uh, is pretty controversial uh, in psychological history. Uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to head over to um, that playlist uh, and I want you to see um, a the uh, the real example of actually Stanley Milgram doing it, and I'm going to link one too uh, of a modern day recreation uh, of the Milgram's obedience experiment. Uh, that and Solomon Asher there, I think you'll enjoy all of that. Uh, so head over now uh, and check that out.